Hello everyone, greetings from Serpent Consulting Services Private Limited. In this series of video, we will go through the sales CRM process in Odoo. Before starting, let me uh, give a small introduction about what is ERP, what is open source model and everything. So the ERP is, uh, ERP stands for Enterprise Resource Planning first. The Enterprise Resource and Planning, these three words are uh, self-explanatory about uh, what is ERP. Enterprise is, uh, uh, if we see the definition of enterprise, it means a list of or group of people who are uh, working together to achieve a same goal, it's called enterprise. The resource is whatever uh, resources like whether it's a human resource or uh, whether it's a machine or an instrument or anything. Like in IT industry, the computers, machines, servers and developers, those all are called as a resource. So uh, in manufacturing, all the manufacturing uh, machines and uh, raw materials, everything is called as resource. The capitals, uh, capitals, bank loans, everything is kind of resource. So sometimes it, it's a liquidity type of resource, uh, manpower is a service type of resource, then whatever goods we are selling is trading type of resource. So these all are called as a resource. And planning is something like uh, we can plan our resources to get a maximum output using or investing very less amount of capital. So combining everything is uh, called enterprise resource and planning. That uh, how it is different than uh, other ordinary softwares. For example, uh, in traditional software methodology, we have, uh, for example, separate billing applications will be there. Uh, then we have separate warehouse management applications will be there. Some someone is using only accounting for. Uh, uh, their localization, for example, in India, we have a tally in US, they have a QuickBooks in uh, Middle East, uh, many of the people they are using Sage or QuickBooks or Panda accounting. So there are lots of uh, different accounting packages are there. Those packages are very good in managing accounting only. Now how uh, ERP is useful for the business and when, uh, when some uh, organization should implement and think about ERP. For example, uh, one company is using multiple software to manage the different departments. For example, to manage uh, CRM, they are using some CRM applications like Sugar CRM and, and or uh, Salesforce or something like this. For accounting, they are using other softwares. For document management, they have other document management software like Alfesco or uh, Ktree or something like this. Then uh, to manage different uh, different departments like human resource, they have their uh, own customized software for HR. So to one organization, when they are growing big, they have to manage all these applications, each and every user in a particular department, they have to uh, make entry in those softwares, company has to buy license or uh, take the maintenance contract from different vendors for uh, different softwares and whenever they have newcomers or new joiners in the company, they have to get them trained on uh, some particular software. So this is very uh, difficult to manage uh, like multiple software then there is no integration between each and every department like sales purchase and billing there is one application and for accounting they are using another application. They will not get uh, exit uh, receivable and payable or partner aging reports and everything because uh, everything it will be a duplicated work like salesperson they will create sale order and invoice person they should generate invoice when the final invoice will be created right and uh, same way uh, for example in the invoicing for example service industries they have a separate HR management software then uh, employees uh, filling up the attendance and their work log entries and if they wish to generate a service based uh, invoice they have to uh, take report from their HR application and then manually they have to generate invoice. So this is all uh, very difficult to manage, right? So what we can do is the company should think for ERP which is completely integrated software and uh, each and every department will be uh, integrated with each other. Now how ERP is uh, integrated uh, together? 
and uh, how ERP works for uh, some organization and how it is beneficial that we will ch uh, check in the diagram. So, uh, in, the, in the screen you can see that uh, the diagram is uh, showing that how each and every applications and uh, each and every modules are integrated with each other. For example, uh, in Odoo, Odoo is a modular based, uh, module based uh, ERP software. Like in other ERP softwares in the market, uh, there is a possibility for example, you should purchase some particular package like in one package is sales purchase and distribution, then another package if you wish to have HR and accounting, you have to buy another package, but it is not customized one, they have uh, some predefined package, you have to purchase the package and user licensing. Now, what are the advantages of open source and what are the advantages of Odoo is open source you first of all you do not need to pay the licensing fees, it is completely free software. You can download online and uh, you can uh, host somewhere or you can install in your local server and start using it. You just need to take a basic level of training about configuration administration and you can ready to start. The open source world, it is uh, like uh, you just download, install and use. Whatever you need to spend is whenever you need some service like maintenance contract or uh, training services, installation, configuration or consulting services, you can purchase uh, services from uh, Odoo partners or uh, official Odoo is also providing those kind of services. You have a very big community in Odoo, th those are uh, ready to provide the different services. Then uh, the other advantages is Odoo is module based system. It means for example, when you start with implementing ERP, you can initially start from one department like you can first uh, activate your sales and CRM process. Once your CRM team is uh, fully uh, live and working on the system, you can then add another module like for example, you wish to add uh, human resource and payroll module, you can add in the system. Then once both the, uh, both the modules and departments are live and uh, running smoothly, you can add accounting module or manufacturing warehouse. So, time to time you can add one module and that module will be fully integrated with other modules uh, in the system. Now, how it is integrated with each other, you can see on the screen here. So, first of all, all the business and flow will start from a new lead. So, you can see on the screen that there will be a various uh, list of source from where we generate different leads. So, leads will be generated by telephone, by uh, website, uh, someone will fill up the inquiry form and lead will be generated. Then we have some campaign or marketing campaign will be there or we have some uh, exhibition and from exhibition we generate a lead. Then uh, those kind of leads will be generated in the system. Then we process the lead, we have a follow up of the leads, then uh, meetings and everything and lead will be generated to opportunity. And from opportunity customer will ask for quotation and we generate a quotation in the system. So, at that time we have a sales module in the picture. So, from CRM we generate a quotation and we send quotation to customers and customer will negotiate, we generate different revision of quotations and then we generate sale order. So, sale order will be integrated with CRM, right. Then once we confirm the sale order, system is generating different options like once sales will be confirmed, we have to deliver the goods or deliver the services. So, based on this, for example, if I have to deliver, uh, deliver the goods, for example, it means system will generate delivery order in the system. So, once delivery order generated, we have a shipment and warehouse management will come into the picture. So, this is how sales will integrate it with uh, warehouse. Now, when we, when we have a sale order generated, system will first check in the stock, whether we have a stock available or not. If stock is not available in the system, system will generate automated purchase order if we are purchasing and trading this particular product. If we are manufacturing this product our own, then system will check the stock, if stock is not available or minimum stock rule will be defined or there are different methodology in, this, in the product that uh, product will be either stockable, it means we stock the product and sell or it is make to order. It means whenever we receive order from uh, customer, we generate 
manufacturing order right or purchase order so it depends on configuration of the uh, product right then the other thing available here is uh, for example uh, uh, we generate uh, confirm the sale order and we have a procurement generated in the system so procurement will decide whether we have to create a new purchase order or manufacturing order based on nature of the product and delivery order will be generated in the system so this is how warehouse management will come into the picture we confirm the quotation if shipping policy is manual invoice and sale order system will allow us to create invoice like in some industry whenever we have a delivery order whatever parcel delivery we are processing based on delivery order we generate invoice in some industry whenever we generate sale order we generate a full invoice and then uh, then we process a parcel delivery and warehouse management will work in that way so here you can see the policy is manual invoice from sale order then we generate a invoice and then we confirm the invoice when we uh, confirm the quotation system will generate procurement in the system so once system will generate procurement in the system if product is made to order then uh, we, uh, if, if it's made to order then system will check whether it's a produce and service type of product we are generating manufacturing order if it's a, a produce and not service type of product we generate purchase order right so that uh, in the system you can see if it's a service type of product it means we are not generating delivery orders what we are doing is if it's service it means we have to generate task in the system that this task will be assigned to some responsible person and he will be responsible to deliver that services so once uh, sale order is confirmed and from procurement we generate uh, delivery order it's sales and warehouse management integration if we have a service type of product and from sale order we generate task and task will belongs to some project and then it will be complete project management and complete analytical accounting and everything will come into the picture so that project and task will be integrated together right so this is how uh, system will work and integrated with uh, sales crm project warehouse and accounting now once we have a sale order generated and uh, we, we have a different invoicing method from delivery order we generate uh, uh, invoice or uh, when we have a, a minimum stock rule defined and the product is not available in the stock we have automated purchase order created and we confirm the purchase order and then from purchase order we have incoming shipment generated and from purchase order we can generate supplier invoice from sale order we generate customer invoice so this is how sales and purchase will be integrated that one stock will go below the stock level warehouse manager or purchase manager will get intimation that you have to purchase those goods and the purchase manager will purchase the goods and uh, stock will be again uh, into the stock level so this is how sales and purchase will be integrated now from purchase order and uh, sales order we generate invoice so when we generate invoice in the system accounting will come into the picture that once we have a invoice generated in the system and we confirm the invoice system will generate receivable and payable entries based on customer and supplier invoice and then accounting will come into the picture now once we have a invoice confirmed we have a accounting entries generated confirm invoice automatically uh, system will generate receivable payable accounts and once those uh, account will be generated customer will either make uh, partial or full payments against the invoice we can generate balance sheet profit and loss and we can again uh, generate different expense income vouchers based on the nature of business and the complete accounting entries will be generated again in the invoice we can define a different tax based on the uh, localization and uh, government rules so tax and everything will be calculated inside accounting and uh, once accounting will be done customer will make the payment and this is the complete life cycle that we got a new lead then we process the lead we generate quotation sale order generate produce the products or uh, produce the service in the project and deliver the services 
and uh, employee will work on the different service product because once we have service it will generate a task in the system and that those tasks will assign to employees and then employee will start working on the task and once they start working on the task system uh, will uh, allow employee to fill up their time sheet. So, here you can see if it is service type of product system will automatically generate task in the system. Once task is generated in the system, the task responsible person will make time sheet related entries. So, that uh, this is how project and HR management will be integrated. The time sheet and attendance will be there in the system and based on the time sheet entries, we can again generate service based invoice and based on time sheet and attendance entries, we can generate pay slip in the payroll. So, this is how HR will come into the picture. So, th this is the complete uh, diagram about the ERP process that how we will uh, get a new lead, we start processing the leads and then we have uh, all the modules integrated, how we use each and every module and uh, how it is integrated and reflect with uh, entries in other modules. So, this was the basic introduction about uh, uh, the complete process inside the ERP and how each and every department and modules are integrated. It will be changed or uh, it will be varied based on the different nature of business, different vertical of business for NGO and for uh, non-profit organization or uh, medical or education field, it will be changed because every business and every vertical has their own requirements and it will be keep changing based on the business to business. But this is the basic uh, overview and uh, integration process of any ERP in the world. So, this is how uh, Odoo will work and all the modules are integrated. In the upcoming sessions, we will go through the different uh, applications like first we will go through the CRM applications, then we will check how it is integrated with sales purchase and distribution, then we will check manufacturing and project management how project management is integrated with HR and document management system and accounting. So, in upcoming video series, we will go through each and every application wise training and uh, uh, we will check how each and every modules are integrated, how uh, one module will uh, reflect on another module like we keep uh, doing the sales and stock level will be counted and stock will go down, how automated purchase order will be generated from uh, sales order, how manufacturing order will be generated and how we recalculate the raw materials and then based on the raw material, how we generate a purchase order or how we assign stock from the, from the stock levels or warehouse. So, this is how uh, the complete process in ERP will work. In the next session, we will go through the sales and CRM process. Thanks for watching the video and have a good day.